Overwatch is full of some crazy secrets, and in this video, I'm going to show you guys some of my favorites. Let's do this. Did you know, on Dorado, if you're playing as Hammond, and you shoot the bells in a particular order, Hammond finishes off the Overwatch theme tune. <laughs> This is awesome. It's so good. It's actually kind of easy to do. I'll put the order on the screen. See if you guys can actually go and do it. <laughs> oh, by the way, Dancing Hammond is uh, actually fantastic on every level. You know, on Volskaya Industries, you've probably noticed the massive mechs in the background. These bad boys are, of course, designed to fight the Omnic threat. But there is one mech that doesn't really fight the Omnic threat. He actually likes to dance the robot. Check this out. <laughs> That's the lad in question. So thank you to Atomic Piggy on YouTube. Now, the way to replicate this in the game is you kind of have to have a lot of patience. It will happen sometimes, and then sometimes it might not. It's kind of random. But he will do this. He will dance the robot in the background, which uh, I think is actually kind of funky. And Overwatch is jam-packed of these little awesome Easter eggs and secrets, and you've got to love it. Now, this next one, it, it really hits kind of close to home, this does. So this is the tribute to Dennis Hoelka. Um, who unfortunately died. Now, Dennis was part of the Envious roster who won the first season of Apex in Korea. And they were actually the first foreign team to win a major tournament in Korea. Very dominant in early Overwatch. And um, yeah, unfortunately, Dennis passed away on November the 8th. And as you guys can see here from my Twitter DMs, um, yeah, still waiting for you at BlizzCon, Dennis. you absolute legend. Staying on Eichenwald, um, any Dark Souls fans out there? Because, uh, yeah, there's a bonfire. <laughs> this is actually kind of neat. Most people probably know about this, but yeah, I, I like this. I'm a big fan of Souls games. you got to love this. Awesome when Blizzard do this kind of like little crossover things with other games. you got to love it. Now, on another somber note, there is another memorial inside Overwatch. And this one is particularly heart-wrenching because it's for a player from China who never got the chance to play Overwatch. So Wu Hyong was 20 and he was a student in Guangdong or Guangzhou University of Technology in Guangzhou. And unfortunately, he died trying to stop a robbery. Um, and yeah, he, he actually passed away on May the 23rd, which was the day before Overwatch released. And the Overwatch developers decided to memorialize Wu in the game on Li Zhang Tao, which I think is just beautiful. Uh, and that says heroes never die. Um, which, again, I think is a, a wonderful touch. So I really like these things in the game. They're awesome to see. Have you ever actually... I mean, do you guys know what you're actually doing on King's Row? Now, this is um, this is very dark. This is, like, very, very dark. The payload, as you guys can see, if I just go to the side here a little bit, it's an EMP, electromagnetic pulse, which destroys electronic components. Now... King's Row has got a very large Omnic population and you are delivering a massive EMP bomb to kill all the Omnics. Oh dear. You can see all over the map on King's Row there's all of the Omnics equal rights stuff. Omnics stay underground. And uh, well, yeah, the end of the map is Underworld. Let's get this thing and this is where the Omnics actually reside in King's Row and probably in most of Great Britain in the Overwatch universe which is, uh, yeah, in, in the pit there. So so you're basically playing as Overwatch agents, mainly, I guess, unless you're playing Talon or Sombra, or so, Sombra, Talon, right, whatever, or the Junkers. But basically, you're delivering an EMP bomb to wipe out the population of Omnix in London. That is some dark stuff. Oh, my God. Do you know what this is? This is Genji's house. You probably didn't think I'd ever show you this, or it's even in the game. It is in the game. It's on the pile. This is where Genji was chilling with Zen, his master. Hopefully, we'll get some lore on these two when it comes to, well, Overwatch 2, because um, that was teased in the trailer. But yeah, this is Genji's sort of apartment, house, bedroom, whatever you want to call it. He's got all of Genji's beautiful paraphernalia. We see the double dragon iconography everywhere because, of course, yes, there's a beautiful picture of Genji and his brother, Big Bad Hanzo. <laughs> is he big? Is he bad? I don't know. Um, back in their younger days with their young skins, which is awesome. And yeah, you can see the rest of this is this awesome piece of art as well where you see the dragon and you see Genji, you see Hanzo. Again, it's just great. This room is really, really good. 
uh, fantastic art style, fantastic stuff. You've got to love it. This is actually one of the things which I don't think people are aware of because you just don't really go up here when you're playing Nepal Village. You just sort of, it's like, yeah, whatever. And even if you do, you just sort of run through and you don't really notice. So yeah, there's Genji's house. Now, the Panorama Diner and Route 66 is full of stuff. And I mean absolutely full of stuff. So the first thing I like is this. This is a check from somebody called Deckard Kane. Deckard Kane is from the Diablo universe. And the date, the 5th, the 15th, or the 12th, was the launch of Diablo 3. And that barcode at the bottom, if you scan that, you get a very special surprise. I won't spoil it for you. Now, there's also something else going on in the diner, which probably, again, most people are not aware of. Look at the condiments. Where's the pepper? <laughs> there's a lot of salt in this diner. But there's no pepper. Also, on Route 66, every single clock is high noon. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to explain why that's the case. It's obvious why that's the case. But yeah, look at all, look at all the condiments. There is no pepper on any of the plates or tables anywhere in the diner. It is all salt. And actually, the diner is really cool because last year, well, in 2019 in BlizzCon, they replicated this and it was a cool kind of little... Well, it was cool. It, it was They just built the diner. But yeah, and a little bit of... Diablo kind of stuff as well. There's loads of stuff in here. I've probably missed a few things, but that's part of the fun. I want you guys to let me know any things I miss in this video or things you'd actually like me to see or to show off because there's loads of stuff happening. Of course, we've got all this here, which is the weak points on the bridge where they're going to plant the explosives to blow the bridge up to knock the train down. And of course, we do know now that in the train was Echo. But we didn't know that at the time. We found that out back in 2018 at BlizzCon when we got the cinematic reunion with Ash and McCree is like, yeah, the, the Echo was in the payload. So yeah, they do like hiding things in payloads. Now this is awesome. So Blizzard World has got a billion Easter eggs and all kinds of things on it, but this is my favorite thing. On behalf of everyone Hatched at Blizzard, up. thank you again and have an amazing BlizzCon. That's Mike Morheim, the founder of Blizzard or one of the co-founders of Blizzard. This here is the check he received off his grandmother to start Blizzard. How insane is that? He actually weren't called Blizzard at the time, but that is it's just insane. This whole room is awesome. If you go back to- And we felt that if we applied the same kind of design philosophies that we had applied to our previous games, easy to learn, difficult to master, um, but really try to make a shallow learning curve so anybody should be able to sit down and figure out how to play, that we might be able to open up the, the genre to a much larger audience. We will talk to you about his game design philosophy and it's just, it's awesome. Uh, these as well, you've got Warcraft, you've got Diablo, and you've got Starcraft, the original Blizzard Our games. On the floor are these plaques. Now, these are the Let's guiding principles of Blizzard Entertainment. Now, these are actually at the head office. Now, I've been lucky enough to go to Irvine many times, and you guys have all seen the Orc statue. I'll show it you on the screen just in case you haven't. But around the Orc statue are these guiding principles that Blizzard are supposed to run by and I think it's just cool. This whole room is just an awesome homage to what Mike Morheim managed to do with Blizzard. It is so cool and of course StarCraft is his favorite game. That's why he's in the StarCraft area. Talking of Mike, there's actually another little easter egg um, in Hanamura Spawn. This here, VV's Adventure, what is this? That's Mike's daughter and that's her adventure game. How cool is that? All right, this is the Reign of the Black King. The Diablo area. Now, you're probably wondering why I'm running around smashing stuff up. This is because, well, this area is based on Diablo. And again, there's loads of little Easter eggs and stuff going on in here. But there's a really cool one. Because in the game of Diablo, if you smash up crates and, like, jugs and whatever, sometimes they have legendary items in them. And this is denoted by an orange effect. And uh, sometimes you'll actually manage to get these in the map. Look at that. Look at that. It's so cool. It's a little Easter egg. It's very rare. This It took me a long time to film that. But uh, <laughs> it's really cool when you get it. So, yeah, I think I'm going to leave this video at that. There's loads of stuff. Like, this is the Sombra stuff going on in the uh, Numerico, or Numerico, sorry, power plant at the end of, uh, well, Dorado. Uh, this was with all the Sombra ARG stuff, Sombra hacking the plant, hacking Numerico. Loads of stuff went on with that. It was so goddamn cool. I'm kind of a bit annoyed that Blizzard didn't carry on with crazy ARGs because there was so much fun to try and work out. But, yeah, there's loads of stuff in the game. I want you guys... To let me know your favorite Easter eggs and secrets in Overwatch because there's loads of stuff. Um, I'm going to end the video on one of the cheeky ones that I actually kind of like. So, uh, yeah, let, let, let me just show you that. This is Diva's Rip Victory Pose. Now, you might be aware of the Diva Gremlin meme, which was the, well, it was the little Diva and it was drinking Mountain Dew and eating Doritos. Um, if you spin this around, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> there's some Dorito chips on the floor. I love it. It's so good. 
to end the video, I think I'm going to hand it over to Mike. And I do recommend you guys go and check out his room in Blizzard World and just go and listen to what he's got to say. It's super cool. All right, guys. Thanks for watching the video and I'll catch you on the next one. Doodaloo. There is another person on the other end of the chat screen. There are friends, our brothers and sisters, our sons and daughters. Let's take a stand to reject hate and harassment. Let's redouble our efforts to be kind and respectful to one another. And let's remind the world what the gaming community is really all about. Thank you.